So when I worked at Volkswagen one Christmas, they had a Christmas jumper day, because you know, that's how you have fun in a corporate environment. And um, at about five past nine, it became clear that everybody had gone to the same branch of Primark in Milton Keynes and bought the same hilarious Christmas jumper, me included. And that's kind of what it's like driving one of these. <laughs> You're just constantly being reminded that your choice is in no way original. But you see at least a dozen red Vauxhall Corsairs like this one as I'm doing this review, right? <laughs> There's one. <laughs> it's not red, but it's a Corsair. A few years ago, uh, there's a Corsa. <laughs> yeah, there's one. And another! Hello. I like you. If you're one of the 60 to 70% of the UK population that already owns one of these, then this review is probably not for you. You should probably just go to the sidebar now. All right, off you go then. Go on. Right, now that they're gone, we can peer behind the curtain of Vauxhall Corsa ownership and see what it's really like. It's actually very good. I know! <laughs> right? I mean, I did not expect this to happen at all. I figured the Corsa was just a meme on wheels. It looks like an epidemic. It behaves like a virus. That is memes. That's, that's the spread of memes. You know, you see that everybody else has got one and it's cheap and then all of a sudden you've got one too and so on and so forth in perpetuity. And the fact that it could possibly be rubbish is irrelevant. Really though, I can't find much to fault with this car at all. It's dead comfortable, it's got a cabin that's both pleasant to look at and easy to use, and it's spacious in here. It looks nice on the outside too, right? I mean, its impact is undoubtedly watered down by familiarity, but it is one of the best looking small hatchbacks you can buy today. Additionally, because Vauxhall knows its audience, you can get good stuff like black alloy wheels and different colored wing mirrors and stripes and sports seats. And you can get them way down the range. That is way, way down the range. There are loads of these things to choose from. As of today, the Vauxhall website lists 13 trim levels. And to be honest, Dissecting them all would be a massive waste of everybody's time. Because as we all know, the supply of these is so abundant that you won't pick a particular trim level. You're more likely just to go to the dealership and pick out the one that you like and drive home in it. As of today, the cheapest one you can get is this one. It's named after Newcastle's poshest bass player. Born and raised in a shipyard town in the north of England. And it looks pretty well equipped too. White alloys, some leather, some Bluetooth. All it's really missing is aircon. So let's say you want cold air. Well, the cheapest way to get that, I think, is to go up to design trim. But you'll notice here that with that, you lose your alloys and the price leap is quite substantial. So as far as I can see, you're better off making like Trudy Styler and sticking with stick. <laughs> so crap. And then paying 535 quid as an option. What's really important here, and another, is getting the right engine. Which is much easier because there are only 10, I think. But they all look quite similar on screen with the majority of them hanging around the 75 to 115 horsepower mark. The petrol ones giving you economy in the mid 50s. A particular highlight is this one though, the diesel, which gives you an 88 miles per gallon average if you get it in EcoTech trim. That's a series of fuel saving measures that I think was formerly known as EcoFlex. And if you're doing big mileage, then that's a good one to go for. But there's one nice red Corsa there. <laughs> but you probably won't be. So as usual for a small car, wouldn't recommend getting the diesel for a variety of reasons. All of which you can find out by going to the Ask section of the Honest John website. Some really useful stuff there. And in a subjective sense, we'd recommend the petrol stuff anyways. I mean, it's just nicer. Especially this one, the one litre three cylinder turbo that's new for this version of the Corsa. Now I happen to like the distinctive oral aesthetic of a three cylinder engine because they growl a bit. However, what Vauxhall's done with this clearly is focused on making it as quiet as possible. So you lose all of that distinctive sound, but you get a three cylinder engine that's uh, much more refined than your average three cylinder engine. It's really quiet at high revs, but because it's a turbo, there's loads of torque at the low end. So it's got that responsive characteristic of a diesel engine, but without all the rancid noise that you get with one of those. 
we talk in more detail about the engine range over the website. But it's enough to summarize for now that these newer EcoTech engines are generally better than the older petrol stuff, which might be cheaper to buy, but because they're non-turbo, they need to be worked harder and your economy will suffer and they're generally just not as pleasant. The range is very insurance friendly though, which you would expect, but is good to know. But whatever you go for engine or trim wise, you'll find the Corsa just a very favorable experience. The refinement is clearly something that Vauxhall's worked hard on. In some small cars, most small cars in fact, the combination of engine, wind and tire noise comes together in this sort of cacophonous symphony that quite often will creep up on you sort of above 40 or 50 miles per hour. Whereas in this, it's not as noticeable. It feels like it's been turned down to five into the background. I happen to be on a bit of a road at the minute, but generally the ride quality is really good. Vauxhall says that it was driving this car around UK roads for a good year before it came out. And you can really tell. And even though you might want to feel a little bit more of what's going on underneath you when you turn the steering wheel, there is a real sense of predictability and sheer footedness about this chassis, which makes this car really good fun to drive. The steering's quite sharp, stays nice and level when you're cornering. This genuinely a really nice little thing to drive this. In feel, I reckon it sits in the middle of the Fiesta and the Polo. You know, not quite as fun as the Fiesta or quite as refined as the Polo, but a good compromise of the qualities of the two. There's another one, brilliant. And on the more objective properties of practicality and safety, the Corsa performs pretty well too. I mean, it's near the bottom of this list for boot space, but actually if you look, they're all pretty much the same. You don't get a twin level boot floor as standard, nor do you get a 60-40 folding rear bench as standard. You have to go some way up the range for those things. Glove box is tiny too, it's like a French glove box. It's already half full of circuit boards and stuff before you put anything in it. You can, of course, get three and five door versions of the Corsa with a door costing about 300 quid, although you do have to buy two at a time. Either way, though, this is spacious, with the three door especially having a surprising amount of rear headroom and legroom, given how slopey the styling is. And actually, isofix points are standard if you've got child seats to think about. It's not the safest car in the class, though, according to the good people at Euro NCAB, who awarded the Corsa four stars and give it pretty average ratings across the board, really. But you know it is cheap. Not only does it have the lowest list price of its most common rivals, you know, buying a Corsa at list price is the same as going into DFS and paying full price for a sofa. So there you go, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Go to hj.co.uk for a more detailed review of this and anything else that you might be looking at. See you then.